Okay, good. Today's chapter is going to be on um, reactive programming and sorry, let me just take this right off again. So I just one second, uh, not one second, like 10 seconds, sorry. We'll be talking today about reactive programming and um, why we actually are considering reactive programming in in um, Shiny. Okay, so okay, I'm back. Um, just close this. Minimize this. Minimize this. So, um, why reactivity? Um, this chapter actually um, introduces us to the the concept of reactivity. Like we already had a, a, an idea of how it works from the beginning of this book, um, and um, why exactly? Do we have reactivity? What exactly is reactive reactive programming according to Shiny? Because it has um it could be defined in many ways based on the um the context to which it is used. Uh, Shiny is actually magic because it makes it possible for you to um to do what could not have been done with the normal um just the normal R programming, like just doing the normal programming in R, it, it could have been very difficult just using, okay, let me just say, just using variable or just using a normal function. It should have been very tough or even just event-driven um, programming. That would have been tough, but Shiny makes it possible for us to be able to like do this. So it's just like um, you performing magic because sometimes when I mention, okay, I could build a web app using Shiny, using R, my colleagues, who, or let me say my friends who actually are, uh, really into web development to be like it's still not like what we do it's not like a, a web app really and um to me it's just like it gives you this um, ability to do something that um would not be possible without um shiny uh shiny magic simple concept combining consistent ways yeah simple concept combining consistent ways but to be honest i've seen some complex shiny apps that sometimes i i, I find it kind of a bit difficult um understanding how it's it works so um straight to the next thing why do we need reactive programming okay um reactive what is reactive programming it focuses on values that changes over time and calculation and actions that depends on those value i think a very good example to make it so easy to comprehend is to look at a spreadsheet that um, for example let's say we have a cell that has um, some form formulas should we change a value and there are other cells um, that are related to that very um, cell with that formula. Should we change the value in that cell containing that formula? It affects other cells related to that cell having that formula. So in that case, that is just how reactivity works. So if you've been using spreadsheets and you've been writing formulas and spreadsheets, you actually have been um, experimenting on reactive programming. So reactive programming is concerned with data stream and propagation of changes. Why reactive programming in Shiny? This is a very good question. Why did we bring, or why is reactive programming in Shiny? So um, Shiny applications are very interactive and they need something dynamic, unlike most R code. So once input and output to stay in sync while minimizing computation, outspan reactive expression could change if and only if their input change. And um, why exactly do we need this change to occur um, if and only if a change has happened in the first place? Like, if we, why do we want a change to happen in an output if and only if a change has happened in the inputs? This is actually to save us on computation time and also to save us on expense of computation, like in terms of time and um, other things. So, why reactive programming? I just mentioned um, that and um, automatically updating um, uh, proper. Automatic reactive programming is for you to be able to automate to automatic updating the propagation of necessary changes. Okay, why can't you use variables? This is a very good question. I kind of like the way this chapter was written. It was written like a research a research paper whereby the first 
present um, what has been before and um, why it could not solve the problem, then you now present the, 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 the solution you intend. I kind of love and other um, other um, options or other um, ways that has been tried and other ways that exist that are not related to it. I kind of like the way this chapter was written. It's so beautifully um, written. Why can't you use variables? Reactive programming values that change over time. That's what reactive programming. This kept this was repeated like over and over. Don't variables change over time? Variables don't update automatically. So variables don't update automatically. What variables actually do is um can actually um have a variable and um variable stored value. You can change the value in a variable, but um you you can't um you can't change it automatically. So and that's why we have this um snippet of code here. I, I believe if we've gone through this chapter, we must have run them to see how it works. But with our experiences in R, looking at this, we would have an idea of what's going on here. And um, the fact that since them C, which is a variable, has already assumed the value 10, should we change term C to 30? The the uh, the other variable temp f would always have that 10 to come out as the answer it will not just update itself so that is one problem if we try to use um variables in in our shiny application so um then we thought of okay how about function at least in functions we can be able to like decide um what exactly we want so for function if you look at this code example again um uh, for temp a function it's a um zero argument function why because there is no argument in this function i speak of this function here there is no argument and when we run this function we already have our temp c outside the function which is already um assigned a value of 10 surely to give us a an output this output would be 50. Should we change term C, would be able to have a different output. And um, the only challenge with using a function is that um, there will always be a computation. It has to always recalculate it, recompute it to um, get the answer wherever that function is called. And um, because it's a simple function, that's why um, we're not on the 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 disadvantage of this will not really be recognized until maybe we have something so complex and we need to like um, re um, reevaluate or recompute. So there was another um, measure that was um, considered and that's actually event-driven programming. For event-driven programming, this is actually one beautiful way of solving this challenge, but it has its own shortcomings and we'll go into that now. Before Chinese, we would probably have used event driven programming. Okay, before Chinese, we probably have used event driven programming. So, cover function that's run in response to events. When buttons are clicked, when buttons are run function, run function to process order. Uh, okay, uh, to be honest, um, the R6 classes, I'm not so, so familiar with R6 yet, but um, with a little of what I saw written there, um, I can just follow the example and see that you have to always uh, mention the input to be able to get um to be able to get um you have to mention the input to get the output. So the the, the short com the short coming of the event driven programming was that you have to always follow through to understand okay what exactly is the um is the um input and um you have to track the input. Okay, yes. Um okay, I think it mentioned the event driven programming short problem of unnecessary computation. But introduce a new problem. Very carefully track which input affect which computation. How to balance correctness versus performance. So this was another challenge they had the event driven programming. And so they consider the fact that okay, what can we do to um, um, solve this problem once and for all? Um, sorry, just give me a second. I need to plug in my laptop. Okay, I'm back. Um, so event programming had this shortcoming, and then we consider the fact that um, what can be done. So um, for Shiny, Shiny came with um, a mix of, put this through um, 
possible ways of solving this problem together and gives give better reactive programming in PWA. So reactive programming like combines both what the function would do and also what the event driven programming would do. So now we have this next slide, reactive programming. Now in reactive programming, we combine features of the solutions we've seen so far. So um, if we run this, um, there are two things that happen based on um, the event driven programming, the uh, um, programming example that we saw um, earlier, maybe I should just go back one bit. Um, at this point here, we have a function called get that gets the value, and we have another function called set that sets the new value. Then we have another function called up on updates that actually updates the value. So this is what is the example for the shows how this actually works, that um, you can set the value and um, you can actually still update the value here and get a new, um, a different um, output. But for reactive programming, it brings this whole thing together. So we have this um, the reactive val function and what does it do exactly? Um, because in a function, I might not have to state the inputs, I set the arguments, but in event driven programming, I have to. So what that means is, um, okay, let me go back one step. I want to quickly show something that I noticed. Um, okay, I think this is it. Yeah, in this particular function here, we noticed that um, this function has no argument. So it's a zero argument function. We could actually write this function. It's a word function, though. We could actually write a different a, a, a different form of this function by including the argument, maybe term C, and maybe assigning the value 10 to it just um, to um, just to give it an argument. And that would have made it possible for us to like um, whenever we need to change the, the value, all we need to do is temp F, and um, we have the um, the uh, the bracket, then we can just decide. Okay, we can just fix or assign a value for term C, and we we'll get uh, I uh, will get a we we'll get an output based on whatever um, value we input for our arguments. But for the reactive programming, it's like combines this whole thing together. And and what would we have for term C? We could have a reactive val that is the reactive val of that's the function. That function is created to hold the value or all the value 10. So if we want to get that value back, we use term C, the function term C to get the value back. So term C, we can set another value this time around. So when we are setting at this point, it's like we are using a one argument function now to set the value 20. So when we set the value and run, run term C again, we get 20 this time around, meaning that the, the, the function term C has now become a one argument function. Earlier on, it was a zero argument function when we're just creating set uh, when we're just creating the the um the function so move let's move to the next part now we want to see how temp f is going to work out and when we actually set up that function using um reactive this time around it makes it possible for us to um update the output whenever we change the inputs and this is how the solution was born. What then is this important feature that backed this new solution of reactive expression? Number one, um, these properties are called mix. We mix us um, C sign as lady and also as um, as um, cast. So um, how is it lazy? It only does work when it is called. So instead of recomputing, it goes to the cache and picks out the value and gives you back the output you want. So it doesn't recompute, it doesn't go through that stress. It only checks, goes to the cache and picks out the value and gives it back to you. Uh, next slide. Okay, a brief issue of reactive programming. Now we are done with, um, we are just done with the main part of the textbook. We're just going into uh, the chapter, sorry, the chapter. And now we're just going to the last part of it, the brief history on reactive programming. First of all, we'll talk about um, the fact that um, if you've ever used spreadsheets, that actually is some level of um, um, reactive programming and um, not really studied academically until the late 1990s. Yes. 
It was not really until the late uh, 1990s. And then um, afterward, um, it was pushed into the mainstream sometime in 2010. And um, what's really brought into the mainstream, I think it was about, um, yeah, JavaScript UI frameworks like um, Knockout, Ember, and um, Meteor. Then now we have these other frameworks, React, Vue, and then Angular. And um, they work hand in hand with um, reactive backends. So um, reactive program is now a gen is, is a general term, but there's a lot of variability in implement implementation and um, terminology. But in, in Shiny, it is quite reactive programming has like its own definition. It's more like what we see with the Meteor and the Mob X. Uh, if I compare something like a reactive yes. In that it is a functional um, reactive programming. No, not find shiny working in that um, that light. Um, we'll come to understand more about the caching aspect of um, reactive programming when we see chapter 14. And um, I'm so glad that one of us will be doing the honors of going through that chapter. And that is, uh, um, I think, Lucio. Lucia signed up to take that chapter. I don't know if I'm right. I'll still check the spreadsheet to confirm. Um, I think that ends this chapter. And we have um, some other videos from other past court. Maybe I didn't do thorough justice to this chapter. I believe you go back and check. Um, luckily for, for, for us, there's no exercise in this chapter. And um, if not, we would have spent more time. So we have a lot of time to ourselves. She in case you didn't really go through the chapter, you can still go back and go through it and get what it says. So um, I don't know if anyone has any question, but if not, um, I just want to add that um, Meteor was actually the inspiration for Shiny for Jo Cheng. And um, thanks to Jo Cheng for, for this, uh, for this uh, beautiful, um, piece of work. Um, at this junction, I believe uh, maybe we have something we want to contribute, we have something we want to say, like Trevin. Trevin always has this links, he always drops on the on the chat and post like um, go back and search more on. Uh, would love that now. Anyone wants to contribute? Lucio, Lydia, Trevin, the floor is yours. I would mute now and yeah, you say something. Oh, I was just, I was writing in the chat, but I might as well say it. Um, Joe, Joe Chang, he did a talk on Shiny and like even just like, um, I guess, building Shiny at last year's Art Studio Comps. I'll look for the link and put it in the chat, but it was really an amazing talk. Like he did one of the keynotes. And then actually I do have a question because I know like I signed up for one of the upcoming chapters. Uh, I think it might be 14, I forgot if it's 13 or 14, but um, what was I gonna say? I noticed that it's the same day as another chapter. I just wanted to make sure that's correct, that there would be two chapters on the same day. Muted, sorry, I, I thought I was not muted. Um, I was second that talk, I was lucky enough to see it in person. Okay, Trevin said it was second that talk. Uh, what I'll do is, um, Let's just stay on the call since we still have more time. I'll quickly check the um I'll quickly check the the uh sorry. Let me just check the spreadsheet and I would be sure. Okay. Okay. Um This is not cool. Right, right, right. Okay, there's about three messages again. Let me see. Um, the path and feature are driven. <laughs> okay. 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 I'm coming, sorry. It's, um, okay, why reactivity? Okay, the reactive. Graph. Okay. Um. I don't. Oh. Oh. 
Oh, now I see. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. 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 Um. Let me quickly add that. Um. There was a time. Um. John actually. John. Um. John Hammond actually mentioned that I um work on the I got it in person as well. It was amazing. Oh, that's weird. I had not seen it. Thank you. Okay, I um so uh John actually mentioned that I should um adjust the spreadsheet at a point in time. I had not done it, but he later um made an um, adjustment here about the daylight saving. So I thought maybe automatically it's worked on everything. So I don't know if it's possible or the two the two chapters to be held on the same day. Um, Lucio, I don't know if that would be possible. Okay, someone just updated it. Oh, beautiful. Okay, beautiful. Okay. So um, if that has been updated, I don't think that would be a problem. But to be honest, I actually wanted us to finish this book as, as soon as possible. I don't want us to go beyond me. I don't want us to go beyond me. So, um, um, okay. I will say it might be better for me to do chapter 17 then, because I'm actually, I have a big test coming up on the 14th of April. Yeah. Okay. Like okay. I had spring break the week of the 28th. So I was like, okay, I could get it. I could do it for sure then. But yeah, I wanted to check and see if it was definitely that day. Okay. So um, are you saying you might not be able to take um 15? Yeah, I could do, it'll probably be better for me to do 17 just to be safe. Okay, okay, no problem then. Um, then I would have to take 15 then. Um, well, um, I think that gives me work to do. I would prepare myself to take 15. Um, <laughs> okay, interesting. I'll prepare myself to take 15. Who is doing the edits? Uh, is that you, Lydia? No. <laughs> oh, maybe Lucia or Trevin then. Okay, the chat says it's me. Oh, Lucio. Oh, no problem. No problem. It's fine. Um, Lucio will be taking the reactive graph and um, I'll take the reactive building blocks. So personally for me, I'll see if it's possible for us to have the two chapters. Okay, I'll see if I can take, I don't know. Let's just, let Lucio take it on his day. I will prepare myself. If there's still time, I could start then um, complete it uh, the next day or since we've separated the days, let's just leave it that way. But I just hope we don't go beyond May. I don't want us to go beyond May. I don't want us to go beyond May. So um, I think that's fine. Um, on this junction, at on this note, I want to say um, thank you everyone for showing up today. Um, it's always amazing when we come around uh, in our numbers. It's four. Uh, which we actually would unmute most times and talk because it makes it more interactive and alive. Um, I apologize, sometimes I always meet myself and that's because of the environment or the background noise and all, which I try to avoid. But uh, I think um, it's much more better where I am now so I can be able to um, show my face and also talk. Um, I want to say thank you once again. Um, I look forward to um, Lucia's presentation next uh, two weeks, two weeks time, no, in two weeks time is. Yes. Uh, thank you so much and um, have a great week day. Have a great week, everyone. Uh, and have a Lucia wonderful has a hand up. Okay, I oh, I didn't, I didn't say, let me stop sharing. Maybe that's why I'm not seeing anything. Okay. Uh, and yeah, maybe if we want to, to end before May, we can skip some chapters because uh, in the in the later sections, uh, the, the themes are kind of general. So in, in my case, for example, some of the, of the last chapters, like I, I don't really mind skipping them because I don't really uh, care about the content. So maybe if there are any other chapters that uh, all of us, like we can agree to skip, maybe they are very short, like chapter 17, or perhaps, I, I know we, we simply don't want to do them. We can, uh, we, I know we can choose one or two. Okay. Okay, uh, there's no problem. We can turn out. Yeah, you're very correct. And we could actually just go through those, uh, maybe those two chapters during the, um, during those two weeks of no meeting, the ones that are not. So, well, I second that if anybody is going to uh, also. Um, okay, anybody? 
That sounds fine. Yeah. Okay. Or even if, depending if they're like, not that much content, even just like com like combining a few of them. Combining into, yeah. Like mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. We could so just like combine one instead. Does a couple of them at a time, and yeah. We could just combine instead. Um, that could that could work too. So um, just let's wait till Lucio presents on the fourteenth. At least with these two weeks, God helping, I believe every other person might want to do the same. Just see what the chapter seventeen and eighteen is like, um, and see if it's something we could put together. Um, if possible, we could just have that together. And that would be beautiful. Thank you so much, everyone. I think we are done. Um, does anyone have has any other thing to say? No, uh, just thanks, everyone. Okay, Trevin, have a great day. Lucio, Lydia, have a great day. Bye. Have a good one. Bye. Thank you.